Yeah, exhausted looking athletes walking in as Martin Fuchs uh, having uh, given it his all. Walking, walking back. And now we're going for the last live event today, the K2 1000 meters. Again, an opportunity for, for, for young and, and, and athletes that are really wanting to come through to, to show what they can do. Absolutely, and uh, I think there will be a battle between Hungary and Germany again. Well, we see, we're going to see them paraded along. So there's Roxana Gia and Elena Moroniak from Romania. Romania have really put some really solid teams forward in the last couple of years. Lane 3, Kira Stepanova and Svetlana Czernigoskaya. This is also a really good crew. Uh, Kira Stepanova has been over years also in K2 500 meters. And Sarah Brisler and Melanie Gephardt. I know that Melanie Gephardt was, was ill the last week, so they don't really know on which level they are competing now. And Damara Cipes, which is just a household name in this sport with Eric Medvedsky. Then Poland in lane six, Isarczka and Pasek. And the Canadian double with Natalie Davison and Alana Bray Lahid. Bit of noise for the Portuguese, Sarah Sotero and Rita Fernandez. Let's hope they can do something here. And finally, Denmark, Nisden Funch. This is also quite a young crew. So we've had race number 118 of the, the schedule. We've had a great power tournament in the last couple of days, and that's really a lot of excitement going on there with the Vars going through for the Olympics and uh, hopefully being able to watch that online. And, and now we're uh, concentrating on race 118, and it's the K2 1000 meters. They're just really being held back before they actually go. They go off. The times, uh, how do you, have you been looking at the times so far? Are they, are they reasonable or not had a chance to look really? Uh, times are nothing special today. I think it's because of this crosswind, yeah, that they can't really paddle uh, top times, world's best times. This is not possible with this little crosswind. Uh, but otherwise, I think with the warm water, if there would be a little uh, tailwind, it could be a good opportunity to, to make new best times. Um, I was paddling here four weeks ago already for European student games and uh, made the best time this year so far for me in the K1. So, um, How did the student games go for you? Oh, <laughs> uh, I felt really good um, because I also was injured this year and uh, it was good to see that um, I'm back uh, on a good level but uh, finished fourth for, oh, no. for 30 hundreds or half a second, something like this and uh, this is the place where nobody wants to be. Back onto the action, so you'll have your favourites in front of us. Spain, Romania, Russia, Germany, Hungary, Poland, Canada, Portugal and Denmark. The start is ready for them. It's the A final of the K2 1000 metres. Two of these ladies are going to be world champions in about four minutes time. Let's see who has the good start. Yeah, Hungary came out really, really well off the blocks. But also Denmark and the Canadian double. There we have the familiar green shirts of Hungary. You put on the green shirt, you've either done something well or you have the potential to do something well. The straight weights, how are, they, how are the straight weights going? Yeah, you can see that Hungary is quite low with their stroke race, with stroke race um, compared to the boat under them, like Polish teams or also the Danish crews. So you see that the, Dan the Hungarian girls, they are they're quite tall, they, they have a long stroke, but also a lot of power and um, this is especially for dancing is really important when you can do, when you can go down with the stroke rate and um, have some relaxation for your for your brief well they're really pushing it forward and they at this point they'll they'll be conscious where they are and they're uh, they're controlling the race yeah I think if if you're in this leading position one boat in front of everybody you really can feel this and it also can uh, give you an extra push because you just know, hey, this is, is, is a good day. I have a great shape today. And um, that's why everybody wants to be in front because it gives you such a great feeling. But 
uh, it also can be quite tough because when you do it too fast in the first 500 meters, uh, it, will, it will, will pay back in the second half. And this means that you just have no power anymore and everybody is coming over you. But I think this will not happen today. This Hungarian crew is just looking too good, too controlled, too powerful. So as it stands at the moment, it's very much the arrow formation. So it's going to plan, it's going to form anyway with the Hungarians really establishing quite a solid lead. As you can see, it's like a mill pond out there at the moment. So the conditions are very, very fair. And they look like they're in unison as well. Yeah, absolutely. You can see this now with this perspective that every stroke is the same. Also the technique, they look really synchron. And uh, we don't see it because of the spray deck, but I'm sure also the legs are doing the same at the same time. And this is so important and in the same way, very difficult to have this in a K2, that just everything is the same at the same timing. And when you manage this, you have a boat which can win gold medals. Well, at the moment, it's quite a battle for second place with uh, Poland in lane number seven fighting for Russia in lane number three. Also Canada. Germany in lane four. Sorry. No, I'm saying Canada having a bit of a struggle at the moment, but like you say, Germany still in it with about 230 meters to go. Yeah, and uh, you can see like crews like Romania, which were really fast in the start, they are now just out of the game because they probably did too much in the first first couple of hundred, hundred meters and uh, this is the, the hard thing over a thousand meters where you can see now the Hungarians they have just have some effort to, to make a finish sprint so crazy they are pedaling in a different league today so the Hungarians are really putting on a, a bit of an exhibition as we speak they're certainly going to win this by a country mile but it looks like the Polish are putting in a solid finish to tie it up and can it be Germany to take the, the last medal? Yeah, it looks like the German team also have a good finish. World champions are hungry. Poland take the silver and Germany take the bronze medal. Well, they don't even look like they're tired. I'm that sure they are. It was just a great race. And um, yeah, that's the thing, I think, when you, when you lead down the whole race it, it gives you such a good feeling and the adrenaline is just so high you don't feel that you just did some world-class performance and uh, yeah must be a great feeling but there's a payoff at the end and I'm sure that the, the German team will be happy with their medal especially of the, the story from Melanie which was uh, sick the last weeks so it's always hard to, to compete when you don't know uh, which level you are right now and uh, when you can't train quite normal the last weeks before the, the competition. And I'm sure they're really, really happy to, to go back with a bronze medal. So that's uh, it's been a great hour so of, of, of activity, eight races. I have to do the stats for how many countries have done Renner, but I know Hungary have got a couple of victories, Germany's got a couple of victories, Czech Republic have got a victory. Brazil with uh, Guerreros de Santos. And Don't forget C1. Brazil, of course. Yeah. So it's actually, this one's gone to form. Here we go. Tomáš Šipiš and okay, Medvedsky take the goal for Hungary. Poland the second, Germany the third. Russia, Romania, Denmark, Canada, seventh, Spain, and Portugal. All these obviously having a, a great weekend's racing, having made it through to the final. We just gained about have another uh, have another ceremony for you. It's going to be the C1 500 women.